What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation, the best baseball community on YouTube. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Bryce Elder, who had 8 Ks and 6 innings, gave up 4 runs, but had these wicked sliders, including this perfectly painted slider, as well as his two-seamer. He did give up a monster home run to Pete Alonzo, which led Alonzo to have this outburst. Much of the plate. Elder battled Carlos Carrasco, and Cookie had four Ks in five innings, giving up four earned runs, had these nasty split changes, and then gave up this double to Sean Murphy, and Tyler Matzik chirped back at Alonzo. Tyler Big Balls Matzik always gets the last laugh. Logan Gilbert had six Ks in seven innings, giving up one run on only three hits, and had these wicked sliders as well as his upper 90s fastball. He faced Joe Musgrove, who had eight Ks in five innings, giving up only one run, and had his elevated fastballs, changeup, and hammer curveball working. James Paxton had nine Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs, and had these overpowering fastballs, as well as this filthy cutter for a sword. That thing is vicious. He faced off against Shane Bieber, who had two Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up one run, and had this knuckle curve. Lucas Giolito was brilliant with seven Ks in six scoreless innings, giving up no hits. Gio relied on these nasty sliders, including this painted one, as well as his fastball. He faced Clark Schmidt, who gave up three runs in six innings and only had one K, but that K was this filthy knuckle curve. Hated Wisniewski had four Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up two earned runs, and had this changeup and six sweepers with up to 20 inches of horizontal break, and got the knee buckle on this one. You can see why he has a 35% whiff rate on his sweeper, and opponents are only hitting 157 against it. He faced Tyler Anderson, who had five Ks in five innings, giving up four runs, and had this fastball and changeup. Jesus Lizardo, the Jesus Lizard, had eight Ks in seven innings, giving up only one run on two hits. He had his dominating fastball, as well as his slider, and had this quick pitch slider, this sword on a slider, as well as his knee buckle, and had this nasty changeup. He faced Zach Greinke, who had this sick changeup. Look at that thing go. Ty Walker was brilliant yesterday with eight Ks and seven scoreless innings. He had this painted fastball and really dominated with his splitters even Kaying the side with all splitters. He faced Tyler Alexander, who had three Ks in three innings, giving up only one run, and had this cutter and sinker. Tony Gonsolin had these splitters on his way to five strikeouts in five innings, giving up three earned runs. He faced Luke Weaver, who had four Ks in three and two-thirds innings, but gave up seven runs. He did have these cutters. Mitch Keller had an uncharacteristic outing, at least for this stretch, where he's been dominant getting only one K in five and a third innings, giving up five earned runs. He did have this 91 mile an hour cutter that was nasty. He faced James Caprillion, who himself only had one K on this slider and gave up only one earned run in six innings. Zach Eflin had a great game with nine Ks in six and two thirds innings, giving up no runs and only three hits. He had this fastball and painted changeup, but really dominated with his sharp curveballs. Look how wicked these things are. He outdueled Louis Varland, who had five Ks in six innings, but gave up seven runs and had these sliders and fastballs. Freddie Peralta had nine Ks in five innings, giving up only two runs, and relied on his fastball as well as these slow curveballs. He faced Kyle Gibson, who had seven Ks in five innings, giving up two earned runs, and had these two seamers and wicked sweeper. Hunter Brown had five Ks in six innings, giving up three runs, and had this fastball at the knees, as well as these splitters, and painted slider. And he faced off against yesterday's filthiest pitcher of the day, who had one of the best outings of the season, Kevin Gosman. Gosman had an amazing 13 strikeouts in 7 innings, giving up only 1 run, and had no walks. And the only run he gave up was a home run on the second pitch of the game. Other than that, he was brilliant. Gosman relied on his filthy mix of splitters and fastballs. And his splitter was devastating. He had 13 whiffs on a splitter this game on 23 swings. 
and got multiple swords on a splitter. Here are a couple of overlays that show you how filthy Gosman's splitter can be and how it impacts everything in the game. First, here's a fastball and splitter overlay, and you can see how that splitter totally disappears from the plane of the fastball just as you're ready to swing. But then he can also use his splitter to set up a fastball at the knees. You see here a low splitter that dives to the dirt, clearly out of the zone. So when you see another low pitch, you decide to take it because you think it's another splitter. And instead, it's a fastball that catches the bottom of the zone. With Gosman, you always have that splitter in the back of your mind. And you have to because he throws it a ton and he has a 47.5% whiff percentage against that splitter this year. Is Gosman Splitter one of the top five filthiest pitches in the game? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Importantly, Gosman can change the shape of his splitter just by moving his thumb around. Here's him describing that in his interview with me, as well as what his splitter feels like coming off his fingers. I don't like some guys, you hear guys when they throw breaking balls, like tight breaking balls, you hear that. But the only pitch that I hear that on sometimes is my split. And that's because like, and another thing is like a, a big key for me, kind of hard to show. The thumb position is weird too. Like it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's another thing. Like I'll move my thumb according to kind of like like if I want to throw it for a strike and it like me feel pretty confident in it being a strike, it's going to be more like here. But if I want to throw like a nasty split that I <clears throat> am never trying to for it to be a strike. I'm I'm like almost tucking that and pushing it against this middle finger. And so making sure that the last thing that it touches is is this side of my finger, like right here. And then that's how you get like, you know, but I think the biggest thing is like nobody really throws a split on the two scene like I do. Like everybody I've really ever talked to, they throw splits across the four seam. Or like, like, like this, you know? And so, and, and it's funny, like shout out to my JV pitching coach in high school who taught me this because if he wouldn't have taught me this, I don't know where I'd be, you know, for me, like having these fingers on the side, I don't know what, I don't, I think it just makes sure that this is what it's going to come off of. Whereas I think if this is down here, you know, it almost has like mm -hmm. more tendency to go and touch your, your pointer finger. And so having these up here, it's almost like more weight over here to just make it. And then that's what's pulling down on that ball. Now onto my filthiest relievers, Yanir Cano had this elevated two seamer and stair, as well as this painted sinker. Devin Williams had these filthy airbenders. Carlos Estevez had this slider and 100 mile an hour heat. Michael Fulmer had these sweepers. Sir Anthony Dominguez got a sword on this slider. Paul Sewald had this sweeper and fastball. Eric Swanson had these nasty splitters. Will Vest had these wicked sliders. Josh Spores had these overpowering fastballs. Evan Phillips had this painted sweeper. Chris Davinsky had these filthy change-ups. Those are nasty. Danny Coulomb had this hammer breaking ball. Rysel Iglesias had this painted 98-mile-an-hour fastball. Jimmy Cordero had these sliders and sinkers. Craig Kimbrell had these overpowering fastballs. That looks like vintage Craig Kimbrell. Andres Munoz had this filth. Can I help you, Mr. Kim? No, thanks. I'm only looking. But my filthiest reliever of the day yesterday was Felix Bautista. Outside of Joan Duran, this was the filthiest appearance I've seen from a reliever all year. He started this devastation with a get me over slider, and then look at this overpowering heat with fastballs up to 102 miles an hour. And those fastballs get on you even quicker because you have to be prepared for his disgusting splitter. Look at that thing. He caved the side without a ball being touched. He only had two balls that inning, phrasing ninja, and the rest of the pitches were either swinging or looking strikes. And here's an overlay of his 102 mile an hour fastball with an 89 mile an hour splitter. 
What on God's green earth are you going to do with that? Utter devastation by the mountain. And now, my Pigeon Ninja moment of zen. What could be more zen than a doggo in a costume on Bark in the Park Day? Of course, the Padres booth thought this was a crab costume. It's outstanding. Was that like a, you know, like a crab or something? Something. Know. Yeah. What is up, everybody? Got some good news. Today is another Pitchy Ninja profit yeah. boost token day. FanDuel yeah. is giving everybody a 30% profit boost on any MLB straight bet either today or tomorrow. I would use my profit boost token, pick Edward Cabrera, to have seven Ks or more against the Royals today. My parlay of the day, it's a three-leg parlay. I'm going to take George Kirby for 6Ks or more, then take Charlie Morton for 6Ks or more, top it off with Edward Cabrera for 7Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 